What's up, divas and divos? So it's your girl, and you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So I'm actually doing this on a Tuesday, and I'm happy to say that I have got, well, and I guess you can't say it's really happy because nobody wants to have issues and problems, but I'm happy to be able to talk with you guys and help you guys through whatever problems you may have like you know we all have issues we all deal with shit we all go through shit so you know we're all human no one of us is perfect so i'm happy that i'm able to just reach out to you guys whether it just be my opinion my advice you can take it as a grain of salt you can take it for whatever you want you know what i'm saying but i'm just happy that i do have more real talks in my email enough of them okay not enough because that doesn't mean that you guys don't have to email me but you definitely can keep emailing because i'm of course going to continue to do real talk for as long as i can so you guys know i'm not at home right now so i do apologize for the lighting i'm in new york i had a great time with my mom um i was with her for six days and then now i'm upstate new york with my husband so we're having a blast um me and my mom went to the Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art, which was really, you know, interesting. It was fascinating. But at the same time, you know, as a kid, I used to, like, study Egyptians and, like, their culture. And that was, like, the one thing that fascinated me a lot as a, as a kid and as a teenager and also, like, with the dinosaurs. I was, like, huge on that as well. But when I was at the Metropolitan Museum, um, you know, they showcased so many different Egyptians and they just showcase their tombs. They showcase their personal belongings, like their jewelry and, you know, things like that. And I was glad to be able to see it. But at the same time, I was disgusted because I just felt like their privacy and their whole entire culture, their whole entire world was just like, you know, robbed. And it, it and it actually was like, you know, people go and you dig up someone's grave, their burial site, and not only that, but you steal their burial sites and you steal their actual tombs and you steal their personal belongings. And it just bothers me that, you know, that you could be that invasive to somebody. And then, you know, I like asked my mom, like, I wonder in like the future from now will we be put on display not just us as black people but just us as human beings you know what i'm saying like you may have the black culture in a museum and i wonder how they're going to display us from like 2000 or the 90s or whatever are they going to put us with like big jewelry weaves wigs um flashy clothing you know just i just wonder how we are going to be displayed if we're ever going to be put on display because i'm pretty sure like you know in the future many 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 years from now the people that come way after us are going to be interested to know like what type of lifestyle we live like are there going to be iphones you know cameras you know all kinds of stuff like that and are we going to be dug up in our graves you know robbed and stolen for money just to be put on display so it was kind of really disturbing to me because I looked at it and then like my whole attitude changed and I was kind of really disgusted and in a sense it kind of felt creepy to me because these people have passed away like so long ago and you know I believe in like afterlife I don't know about a lot of other people but me personally I believe and I've believed this in for like the longest that we all come back as somebody else like I feel like we've all been here before like you know what i'm saying like we are just reborn as somebody else like we don't just go in the ground and that's the end of us i feel like we are just reborn we have another spirit or we have the same spirit because there's so many like deja vus or like i've seen that before or i've done that or i've heard that or i know this and that's just how i've always felt like we come back we are reincarnated you know what i'm saying so I just really feel like, you know, is that what's going to happen to us? But at the same time, I felt like it was really creepy because, you know, you see these 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 Egyptians and you see their culture and you see their tombstones and stuff. And it's like, I felt like I was invading their privacy somewhat because I'm standing on the other side of the glass and I'm staring at them. And here it is, I'm taking pictures. And like, you know, it was just really freakish to me because one of the pictures on my phone I had taken, you know, I had, I was able to view them all until I was, I was about to post them to Instagram and it was there. And then it just disappeared from the phone. And then you can see it like in a kind of like, kind of like 
you can see the picture, but you couldn't see the picture. Like, it was kind of like really, really faded, kind of like see-through, but I knew it was the picture. And when I clicked on it, it just said image unavailable. And that just like made me feel like weirded out, kind of like what happened to the picture? Because all the other pictures are here still, you know what I'm saying? And it just kind of creeped me out. And I, I really feel like, you know, like there are spirits, there are natural spirits, and that we do come back as another person you know what i'm saying like i would hope so that's you know that's my belief and i would truly hope that we do because i don't want my life to end once i die i want to come back as somebody i don't really care who i come back as maybe i do but you know what i'm saying like i don't i don't know if i want to come back as a dog but you know the movie all dogs per um all dogs have a purpose um you know that was like a really touching movie to me but you know i just felt like it was just kind of disturbing to me for the whole thing. It was like a beautiful moment, especially because I was able to share it with my mom. You know, I've never been to the museum. I was born and raised in um, Queens, New York um, for 23 years of my life. And um, we always went to the Museum of Natural History. I probably visited that place like 50 times. And the main fascination to me was the dinosaurs. So, you know what I'm saying? That was like the main fascination. To this day, it still is, okay? We've been there like a couple months ago and the only thing that I really wanted to see was a dinosaur. So, you know, and I, I even have my, you know, thoughts about the dinosaurs too. But, um, yeah, so we did that. And we also went to the Dollar Tree because I got my mom hooked on the Dollar Tree when she came to Arizona. Um, the only issue is with the Dollar Tree in New York City that they aren't as clean as the ones in Arizona. And they damn sure don't have a lot of shit. Um, but when we got off the um, city bus, um, I have my mom's cart. She has one of those carts that ha that's made of cloth, but um, I was going to hold, you know, I'm, I'm her daughter. I'm not about to let her carry this cart off. So I get off first. I step down and then I have the cart right behind me. Please don't ask me why I did this, but I had on my slides and no socks, but either way, the cart um, like scraped onto my skin for at least I thought it scraped onto my right ankle in the back when I looked down it was blood gushing all over my shoe my foot running down my ankle you know I tried to stop it I didn't have any socks on I didn't have any band-aids I didn't have anything the only thing that I had was a tampon and some and a pad a sanitary pad and um I had to wrap my foot in a pad because the blood was gushing out, like a very bad deep cut. And my mom had to give me her socks so that I could walk home with her. So it was, it was like it was a good like ten minute walk, especially because I was hobbling. But um, you know, I cleaned it up, and I didn't really want to go to the emergency room in New York City. You guys already know how that is. I would probably never got out of there, especially on a Friday. I think it was like Thursday or Friday. I think it was Thursday, and um. Yeah, I would have never got out of there. And, um, ooh, it's a little bit too dark. Too light. I would have never got out of the ER. Um, so, I, um, you know, I dressed it up. You know, I cleaned it out. We followed instructions off the internet. And, you know, um, what you call that? Um, Neosporin, soap and water, they say to use. Um, I even did peroxide and alcohol. Um. I just didn't want to go, but I think I'm going to have to go to the urgent care tomorrow, which will be Wednesday because, um, it's still a little sore. It looks like it's trying to heal, but it's, it's sore and it's red and I really don't want to have like an infection. So, you know, and that can lead to like a lot of issues, you know, there are a lot of parts of your body that you really don't want to catch a wound at and the leg is the lower part of your leg is one of them. So, and your foot. So, yeah. But I'm trying to just see how I feel tomorrow. But other than that, you know, I had a great time with my mom. We went out to eat the day that I got there. She and I, we went to this Korean restaurant. Oh, man, it was bomb. It was just like a really nice atmosphere. And it was kind of around the corner. I seen a rat. Okay, I seen a big-ass rat. Um, yeah, and I ran my ass right back in the fucking um, building. He wasn't in front of the building, but his ass was like across the street. And my black ass ran back to the building. Um, I seen um, just like, yeah, that was the worst, the big rat. Um, 
And it, I just had a great time with her. I, I didn't even have to do anything. I just like to be, I love to be around my mom. And I really appreciate her a lot. So I mainly just like had like the best time in my life with her. And it felt like old times, you know, just she and I. And then my sister was also with us a couple of times. But, you know, I missed them both. And I was glad to be able to see them. And then, you know, here I am, upstate New York. And um visiting with my husband. And I got to see my other grandson tomorrow, um, yesterday. And my son, um, because, you know, he lives up here too. And my daughter-in-law with her big old belly. She's so thin. And she's so little. And her belly is so huge. So her baby is due in November. And in case I didn't tell you guys, I'm having another grandson so I, when am I gonna get a granddaughter three grandsons when am I gonna get a granddaughter like seriously <clears throat> I don't know but it is what it is but other than that you know me and my husband we had a blast we're having a good time and I'm just so happy to be here with him you know I'll be missing him like crazy like you know what I'm saying I really do be missing him so and it just seems like whenever we're together the time just goes by way too fast and you know I guess that's the same way I feel about my mom. But, yeah, I wouldn't even have to do anything. We wouldn't even have to go anywhere. As long as I was around him, he could just be taking naps and sleeping all day. I wouldn't even care because I was around him. So, you know, I'm having a good time. The trip to the airport wasn't that great. Now, y'all know a bitch don't run, okay? So let me tell y'all. My flight was at 5. I get to the airport at 4.19. I go to gate A at Phoenix Airport. And there's like 50 people on the security line. And I'm like, damn, I'm going to miss my flight. Because, you know, the gate closes at 10 minutes to takeoff. So one of the people that worked for American Airlines, she started yelling over the kind of like crowd. Gate B has opened up and you can take gate B into gate A. And she's like, there's no lines, there's no waiting, it just opened up. So I was like, all right, cool. I was the last person in the line at gate A. So I got this heavy book bag on and my suitcase, you know what I'm saying, my overhead suitcase. But I packed and rolled so I could put enough shit in there. And I'm running. Now, mind you, I got on some freaking slides again. And I'm running. I think I ran, it was like a good, probably like a good, three minute four minute run chest is hurting so i get to gate b and the lady's telling me well you gotta take up it's gonna be a minute for you to get there it's a it's kind of like a long stretch and so i had to run kind of like three or like two and a half long city blocks long city blocks but they have these escalators or these ramps that just slide you don't have to move they just bring you so i didn't have to run i basically just walked really fast and so I get to my gate, and I'm sitting there. Now, mind you, this lady sitting in front of me, and I don't know what the problem is. She's real bougie, this white lady. She's bougie with her kids. And she's just giving me, like, the nastiest look. And I'm just like, you know, but I'm, I don't have time for this shit because I'm, you're not about to mess my vibe up, okay? But just please do yourself a favor and stop staring at me like that. She just was giving me the nastiest look, rolling her eyes and shit. Like, okay, bitch. So I'm sitting there, and it's like 4.30. And I'm like, where's the fucking plane plane at? Because it boards at 10. It's supposed to have boarded at 430. Maybe it's because it rains so hard it's going to be late. And I didn't even see like the stewardess or the American Airlines people standing at the pod. So I'm like, well, where the fuck is the plane at? And why is there anybody sitting over here but me, this bitch, and like two, a few other people? So finally, one of the American Airlines people come up, this old black guy. He probably was like in his 70s. So I go up to the counter and I'm like, you know, excuse me, sir. Um, Just a minute. I'm trying to log in. Then I can help you. I was like, oh, all right. Took this motherfucker three fucking minutes, over three minutes, basically, to, to log into his account so he could help me. So I'm like, I'm looking for the plane that goes to... um. Charlotte, North Carolina, where I take the next plane in New York, and it takes off at five, and it's not here. Will you sure you at the right gate? All oh, rude and shit. I was like, yeah, because it's gate A twenty. It says it right here on my phone. It also was told to me by security and the people. So he looks it up. He's like, no, ma'am, they changed it. It's gate A five. Now, mind you, it is now four forty five. AM and I have five fucking minutes to get to my fucking gate before I miss my plane and they lock me the fuck out. I fucking had to run two and a half long fucking street blocks on the escalator. When I say I fucking was running, 
with slides on, which I almost fucking lost, just to make my goddamn plain, I was running. I had on my best lace wigs, curly wig that comes out to here. Let me tell y'all bitches. By the time I got up to the pod where the they was checking my checking my flight ticket, my chest was fucking pounding and hurting. The stewardess took my bag. She was like, we're going to give you complimentary baggage. All right, cool, because I really didn't have the strength in me to put this shit overhead. The plane was fucking crowded. I was the last person to get on this motherfucker. When I got on the plane, I'm dripping in fucking sweat, and I'm like, oh, my God. I hope my motherfucking wig don't come off right now because, damn, if my wig just unadhesive, and I don't even know if that's a word, but unstick from my goddamn head. And I'm like sitting there like tacking it down, looking on my self on my phone to make sure my wig is still intact. And people are like staring at me like, what the fuck is wrong with this bitch? Why? Let me tell y'all something. Worst flight ever. Like, it was the worst. But I got here. I didn't miss my flight. So, you know. But other than that, that has been my week. And we're going to start on with this real talk because you guys already know I got some shit to do. Oh, God. So before I even say what was going on um, with this email, if you need a real talk um, and you want to send it to me, you can always email me at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please remember to put in the subject line real talk so that way I know it's a real talk issue. If you want to change the names of the people in your video or your email, you can go ahead and just do so and just let me know, hey, April, I've changed the names, et cetera, et cetera. And so other than that, you know, I got on my wig that I made from Amanda Hair, which was the kinky straight. Uh, hopefully I remember to put the video below, but I've been wearing it like this. I actually just put it on today and this shit is tacked down. Okay. Not with glue, but you know, mousse and hairspray bitches. Okay. Um, but I did actually have on my Lou hair, which was the wig I did last week. It was like this auburn brown wavy long wig. Well, I had that on for like a few days. I brought like three wigs with me. Okay, because I a girl gotta stay sexy. Hello. She got to stay sexy. But her man. But I really don't have any makeup on today. I just have on my eyebrows and some eyeliner. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. So let's get into this. What's poppin' diva? You can call me Shayla. I'm white, transgender, and 19. I live in a real white, conservative small town where you rarely see anyone of color. When I was younger, I lived in cities, and in some schools, I was the only white English-speaking child. When I grew up a bit older, my mom moved me to the small town I currently live in. It was, a, it was such a shock to just be surrounded by boring white people. I've always been into hair, and in 2012, I started watching your videos, amongst many others, on the wide. Tea. Years later, I began making wigs and started selling them. Girl, let me tell you, the first closure wig I made, girl, hot mess. I purchased some virgin hair and when I bleached it, that bitch went up like a barbecue. I made it on a styrofoam head and it was too small and it put me off for a while. But now I do it full time and I love it. I guess you learn from your mistakes. I remember I used to take the bus to another town about an hour away just to go to an African-American beauty supply store. And it was just one African-American woman who would teach me different things about weaves and wigs. And she kind of took me under her wing. She probably thought I was crazy, though, being a little white bitch. Ha ha. Anyway, although I make the wigs, I never wear them because I'm so self-conscious because of where I live and my family. I think there's this stigma that transgender people wear wigs because they're bald or some shit, but that's not the case. My natural hair reaches my lower back, but it's so thin and doesn't hold a curl and extensions pulls my hair out. Sounds like he's talking about me, except for the white part, you know what I'm saying? Because my hair don't hold a curl. Um, let's see, it's thin and it doesn't hold a curl. It's thin and freaking extensions will pull my shit out. Hair is my craft, and I love it, and I love to be able to wear my work. Like you say, hair is an accessory. Coming from a white person, I hate the fact that Kylie Jenner and the Kardashians have made wigs cool because there's been ladies like yourself who have been rocking them for years and years. It's cool to see the wig game change, though, with companies now coming out with more lace to part, 
rooted wigs. Some bitches jumps on showing everyone. Some bitch jumps on showing everyone got to be. And now everyone thinks gluing down wigs is new. You're a real OG and so appreciated in the community. Well, at least some, well, listen, Shayla ain't the only person that noticed that. But I'm about to tell y'all this real quick. First of all, that got to be shit is old because I have every fucking piece of got to be you can name in my collection from many years ago. Second of all, all the stocking cap method is mad fucking old too because I did that in 2010 and 11 and I have proof to show that, okay? It's funny how I posted, re-uploaded that video like two and a half years ago, two and a half, three years ago to my YouTube channel, this one, this channel, and all of a sudden it's some new shit, like really though, but whatever, you know what I'm saying? I don't have too many friends and like to keep to myself. I don't drink or anything. I just like being at home, making wigs, chilling with my family and dogs, and watching YouTube videos. Okay, hello. I ain't got no friends like that. I stay at home. I be chilling. I be making videos and wigs. Okay, and I got my dog. Um, you've been there. You've been there at my lowest times when I really felt like I was going to kill myself because of not being able to be who I wanted to be and feeling and feeling like an alien in such a small town. I just want to wear my wigs. Fake tan to the gods, rock the most obnoxious lilac lipstick and a black smoky eye. Anyway, I don't do I don't do I don't do too much. I don't too much know what I'm I don't too much know what I'm asking you, but I wanted to share my story with you and how much you've inspired me. I can't thank you enough for the hours and hours of entertainment and laughter you have given me. Much love, Shayla. So first of all, Shayla, I want to tell you thank you. Like, for real, it's some real shit. It feels good, and I love you all to death because if it wasn't for you guys, I would not be doing real talk. I wouldn't even be doing YouTube videos. So you guys make it possible for me. You know what I'm saying? And I try to upload a video every single day. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just what I like to do, and that's what I do. Opposed to making my wigs, you know, and shit like that, and taking care of my family, and spending time with them, you know what I'm saying? I love YouTube, and I love the fact that there are so many different videos that you can watch and learn from. And I also appreciate the fact that you guys acknowledge me and do notice that, you know what, April, you did this before anybody did this. Because when this all started out, YouTube, this wig game was not that many people, especially for African-American people on YouTube doing wig games. You know what I'm saying? Doing wig games. Doing the wig tutorials. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, that wasn't my first, you know, thing to do on YouTube. It was all about doing makeup. But a bitch can't do makeup like that. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just became the thing for me because I just wanted to show what I tried to do on myself you know what i'm saying it wasn't about doing tutorials on wigs and showing anybody how to do them it was just that you know someone asked me what hair is that you're wearing i really like it and i showed them how to do the half wig and then from that moment on it became like okay this is muffin is my lovers she's going to be the wig slayer and i appreciated that because a bitch be paranoid and i tried to slay every motherfucking wig that i can get my hands on i'm not about to walk outside looking like a fucking jackass and on top of that, I just really didn't want anybody to know that I had on a wig. Like, you could think it's a good-ass weed. I just felt like in the beginning of wearing wigs that it was hard for me because I felt like everybody was looking at me. And I felt, I didn't feel embarrassed, but I felt kind of like paranoid. I was just always paranoid. Like, people know I got a wig on. People know I got a wig on, you know. And they didn't have, like, lace wigs. Everything looked kind of, like, shady. So, I had to make it work. And I really didn't wear, like, full wigs. The only thing that I basically wore was half wigs because, you know, I didn't have, like, hair that would hold a curl. I wasn't about to dye it. I wasn't about to stand in the mirror for, like, an hour and try to curl my hair and then just drop. I wasn't about to get a weave because I never had a weave. And when I would um, get just regular braids like cornrows, they lasted for like two days. Them shits would not stay in. So it's like, why do a weave? My hair is not going to hold. So I tried a wig because I wasn't about to cut my hair. And my hair was super long when I first started on YouTube. It was probably like about to hear exactly where this wig is at. And, um, you know, over time it has fallen out. It's gotten thin. I have cut it. Um, I have cut it to right here because the ends were dead. 
And it was just something for me because I wanted to change my appearance. And not even my appearance, but I got tired of wearing like the same hairstyle. But in the beginning, I was like super paranoid of going out the door with my wigs on. You know what I'm saying? And like, I know that I'm not the only person that feels that way. And there are some people that don't even give a fuck. Like when I say that, I mean it not in the best of way, but like cut the lace off, motherfuckers. Cut the lace off if you're going to wear the lace wig. And just... Try to make it look believable, believable as much as possible. Like, no, we're not all experts, but just try it. Try it. Um, because it's all just a learning process. But I know that I am not the only person that feels that way. There are still people out there to this day that feel paranoid about wearing a wig in public. And you know what, Shayla? You should not feel like that. Because let me tell you something, bitch. You wearing your wig out in public sets you apart from everybody the fuck else, okay? Your wig look better than probably grandma's wig or Sally Mae wig or whoever else in that small town. You want to set yourself out from everybody else. Like, I don't really like to stand out that much because I don't want nobody to notice me because I'm just like a very anti-social. I'm not like it's anti-social, but you know what I'm saying? I am sociable, but I'm very introverted and I really don't like to be noticed like too much and when i say notice meaning like people staring at me that don't know me from youtube just like like oh, you see her makeup do you see her wig like shit like that i don't really you know i just get kind of like paranoid about shit like that and um you know so i just feel like i don't want to be like everybody else like meaning i don't want to wear the same thing like everybody else wears i don't want to do the same shit that everybody else does but I do want to stand out and I don't, meaning, look at my baggy eye. Um, I want my hair to look nice and I want to be different and I want to be able to just like, you know what I'm saying, put on a wig and people be like, dang, bitch, um, yas, hello. Let me tell you something, Shayla, regardless of what you may think that other people are going to think about you, it shouldn't even matter. You know what I'm saying? Like. Fuck what everybody else thinks. Like, for real, some real shit. Fuck what everybody else thinks. And fuck what everybody else motherfucking thinks. Like, on the real, like, seriously, like, people gonna say what they gonna say regardless if you got on a wig or if you ain't got a wig on. They gonna look at you because you're a transgender. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing because no disrespect. I love everybody. I don't give a fuck if you was transgender, trans, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You're a person. You are a human being that bleeds the same. Your heart pumps the same. You know what I'm saying? You go through issues just like everybody else. So people going to stare at you for regardless if you wear a wig or if you don't wear a wig. They just going to look at you because that's what the word, world is about, judging other people. And me, personally, sometimes I like to be different. And sometimes I like to be different because I want to tell everybody, fuck you, basically, on some shit. Like, I don't really give a fuck if you don't like what I got on, bitch. I don't really give a fuck about how you feel. I don't really give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? And that's just me sometimes. And if we really all had like that mindset, then we wouldn't be so judgmental on others. And we wouldn't be worried about what somebody else got on or what this person or that person have on. So what I'm trying to tell you basically is wear your motherfucking wigs. Don't make a wig and then don't wear that shit. You could be wearing that shit in that white bitch in that town where you at. Probably like, oh, girl, where you get that? Your hair looks so nice. Who, do you, who does your hair? Oh, and you telling them, oh, this is a wig, girlfriend. This is a wig. And really? Well, can you make me one? And then you got Sally Mae and Sheila and Mary and Tina and Kim all got you hooking them up, making wigs for them. And the word goes on and on and on. So don't feel like you got to hide yourself. Expose your motherfucking self, bitch, and get out there. You know what I'm saying, girl? Get yourself out there and show your work. Let me tell you something. When we and my mom was going to the museum, the lady, um, the transit lady, she could tell that we was trying to go to the other side, but the escalator was closed. So she let us know ahead of time before we even walked over there that the escalator was closed and we can go down through this way. And then she says to me, and I had on this wig, and I didn't have it like this. I had like a braid in the front, like, you know, just a cornrow. And she goes, sweetheart, your hair is beautiful. Who does your hair? And I said, um, this is a wig that I made. What? She said, you can't even tell that that's a wig. That looks so real. And see what I'm saying? That when you hear shit like that, 
that make you feel good about your work. You feel what I'm saying? Like the first half wig that I made, the first you part wig that I made, girl, that shit was so heavy. Like, I don't know what I did, but it took me like 14 hours to make the shit. And it was so heavy. I had put those wig clips in it. Oh man, it was pulling my little thin hair out to the pieces. Okay. But yeah, the first wig that I made, the full closure wig was too small for me too, using a styrofoam head. So, you know what I'm saying? Now, you, I go outside with a wig on all the time because I don't give a fuck. If you don't like my goddamn hair, bitch, I don't give a fuck. If you see me yesterday with blonde hair, now you see me with this hair. Bitch, I don't give a fuck. Be confused. Motherfuckers, be confused, okay? Be fucking confused. But on some real shit, Shayla, don't be afraid to be who you are. Don't be afraid to show your worth, your passion, okay? Don't be afraid to love yourself. Fuck everybody else. The motherfuckers in that town where you live at probably ain't even got no style and don't even know what a wig is from a weave to a ponytail clipping to fucking whatever else you know what i'm saying so on some real shit be yourself and stop worrying about what everybody else thinks that's all i keep telling you guys stop worrying about what everybody else thinks like you know i tell you guys that sometimes i worry about what everybody else thinks because i don't want to put any foolish shit on the web and people look at me like i'm crazy but also at the end of the day I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks because y'all ain't gonna take care of my kids and pay my bills. So why the fuck should I care? But there is a certain part to me that still does care because I would never want to disrespect myself. But as long as you're not disrespecting yourself and you happy, girl, wear your motherfucking wigs because these bitches are fucking accessories, okay? And my accessory for the day is named, uh, let's see. We're going to name her Nay because my daughter Nay's hair is long and thick just like this and so is Mumsy. So we're going to name her Nay because this is this is my alter ego for the day. So you guys, if you guys have like a same type of situation or a story like you wore a wig and you felt the same type of way, leave it down below. Leave Shayla your advice of how you would rock your wig outside of, you know, your home. So, let's get on to the next real talk. Okay. So, this one is marked urgent. Okay. Hi, Diva. How are you? You can call me Phaedra. Before I start, I just want to say how much I love your videos. You're my favorite YouTuber and you're so pretty. I'm jealous. Keep going, girl. Girl, cut it out. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I like to be people's favorites. For real. I love to be people's favorites. Anyway, I'm 17, nearly 18, and I'm due to have my baby at the end of August of this year. I got nearly everything ready for her. It's a baby girl. I'm so excited. The problem is my boyfriend, the baby daddy, completely refuses to pay for anything I need for the baby. I had to leave my part-time job a few months ago because of pregnancy complications. He didn't want the baby in the first place and wanted me to have an abortion but slowly came around. He works full time and earns enough to support him, me, and the baby, but he doesn't want to, but he wants to be with me. My grandmother purchased the $800 pram for me, and my mother and I bought nearly everything else. My boyfriend spent around $100 in total. He just doesn't understand that the baby is as much his responsibility as mine. He says that he doesn't want to break up with me because he doesn't want to have to pay child support. In the country I live at, you're committing fraud by saying you're single and claiming welfare. But it's the only way I'm going to be able to fund the baby and me once she's here. I will also be given an apartment to live at by the state and will be paid for by the state until I can go back to work when the baby's a little bit older. He says he's going to come around all the time and stay over many nights of the week. I'm scared I'll be, find, I'll be found out by committing fraud but what do i do i have to look after my baby what do i do diva i don't want to break up with him but i want him to take responsibility of his child please help phaedra so first of all phaedra is 18 well she's 17 i think she said she's 17 nearly 18 and her baby is due at the end of august no that sounds like me because i was 17 and i had my first child nearly at the end of august my son is 26 now he was born august 23rd and i had turned i just turned 18 in june um and i lived with my mom and she helped me with everything and my baby daddy was a piece of shit okay he's a piece of shit um but 
here's the thing. She's got a baby daddy. He wanted her to have an abortion. She had to quit her job because of complications to her pregnancy. Her grandmother bought her the $800 pram and her and her mother nearly bought everything. The baby father, we going to call him Will, only spent $100 in total. You know what I'm saying? He says he's going to come around. You know, he's going to help with the baby, but he hasn't done a damn thing. And she's scared that if she goes on welfare just for some help, that she'll be caught as fraud because, you know what I'm saying? She feels like because she's not with him. Uh, well, she's with him and she's lying. First of all, sweetheart, let me tell you something, Pedro. Your baby father ain't bought shit. It's a hundred dollars. What is one hundred dollars going to do for you? Like seriously, are your baby? What are you buying with that? Some diapers? Like seriously. And on top of that, does he even come around like that? He said he doesn't want to break up with you. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. First of all, he's young. Young and full of cum. Second of all, this nigga is playing you like a fiddle. And he could care less about how you feel or how his baby's going to feel. If he's not helping you now, what makes you think that in the future he's going to help you? He don't have to live with you. You can still get your apartment and be on your social services until you get back on your feet. You don't have to be with him. He's not a part of your life. But what does he say? He says to Phaedra, he doesn't want to break up with her because he doesn't want to pay child support. First of all, sweetheart, let's just get this out. You guys are not married. And if you were married and you were separated, he would still have to pay child support. He's still going to have to pay child support. It don't matter if y'all stay boyfriend and girlfriend and, you know what I'm saying, y'all live in separate places. This nigga still going to have to pay child support. So just because he feels like he don't want to break up with you because he don't want to pay child support is some bullshit. First of all, if a nigga said to me, I don't want to break up with you because I don't want to pay child support, I look at this nigga like, what? So you only want to be with me because you don't want to pay child support? So nigga, you don't really want to be with me. Like, bye, bitch, you don't got to break up with me because I'm breaking up with your dumb ass. Like, or, like, who the fuck says some shit like that to their girlfriend who's expecting their child? Like, I mean, like, who fixes their mouth to say, I don't want to break up with you because I don't want to pay child support? Nick grow. you want to pay child support anyway, okay? It don't matter if you break up with her or stay with her and y'all have boyfriend and girlfriend relations you still gonna pay child support because when the state gives you social services welfare they want their money from the, the, the deadbeat dad they want the money they want their money for medicaid they want their money for the food stamps they want their money for the cash benefits they want their money and if you guys are boyfriend and girlfriend does not matter he is still going to have to pay child support how do I know this? Because I've already been in this situation. Okay? And it wasn't nothing recent, because look at my kids. But this was like, oh my God. Sheesh. Probably like 25, 26, 27 years ago. <laughs> you have to be, you don't even have to be married. There are people, there are families that are married, and the husband has to pay child support to the wife because they're separated. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter if you guys are broken up or if you are all together. This young that this little young dumbass is going to have to pay child support. So you can tell him to forget about it. And sweetheart, let me tell you something. Never put your stakes on a man. Don't put your opportunities and your blessings in the hands of a fucking man who don't do shit for you, who ain't around for you, and don't do shit for your baby. What I mean by that is this. Putting your stakes in his hand is like saying, I'm not going to take the welfare and I'm not going to take the apartment because he says he wants to be with me. Don't you know that men talk a good game, sweetheart? And it's not just men. It's people in general. People talk a good game in general. So what makes you think that the shit that he's not talking is a good game? He's talking some bullshit. Then back, forth, side to side, middle, and upside down to you, sweetheart. If he's not coming around now and he's not helping you, he's not going to come around when your baby is born like that. He, yeah, he may come around a few times, but let me tell you something. You need a home for you. You need a home for your baby. You need stability. You need food in your belly. You need a home. You need a place for you and your baby. Fuck this nigga. Like you just said, he makes enough money to support you and his baby and himself, but that's not what he's going to do. 
what he were what he's all concerned about now and what he cares about now is will. Well, what can Will get out of it? What Will going to do? What Will need? What Will wants? Will didn't want the baby in the first place. So what makes you think that Will really cares? If Will can say to you, I don't want to break up with you because I don't want to pay child support. That just shows me right there that Will is a selfish bastard. Okay. So what would I do? I would get my apartment and I would get the help that is needed. You know what I'm saying? And I would also second, I would also just second guess him and first guess him as to if this is who I really want to be with. Yeah, he can come and spend time with the baby and see the baby. But is this who you really want to be with? Is this someone who deserves you? You know what I'm saying? Is this someone who deserves to be around you and your baby all the time or whenever he feels like it? You know what I'm saying? Is this someone that you can trust? Is this someone who's going to support you mentally and physically? You understand what I'm saying? Like, for real. If he's not supporting you now and you're pregnant, then what makes you think that he's going to support you or your baby when the time comes? Let me tell you something, sweetheart. You young and you got so much life ahead of you. And it's best to learn your mistakes now and then move past it, move forward. You know, a lot of times when these young girls or young women have babies, you know, the guy's always like, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. And then they just slowly wean off. They're not there. And it's just sad that a lot of females can believe all of these things that these guys are saying to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need to stop falling for the bullshit, that fucking old bullshit, that game that they spew at us. Like, let me tell you something. Men come a dime a dozen and so do women, Okay. With that being said, never let somebody fucking take you out of your character and make you vulnerable to them, okay? Don't be vulnerable to no fucking man, especially if he's not there for you and he ain't doing shit for you or yours. Then fuck that Negro. You ain't got to be around somebody like that. Damn sure don't have to give them your time and then dedicate yourself to them when they can't even give you at least 70%. Now, I say at least because 70% is still not a lot. Like, look, Negro. Look, nigga, you're going to have to give me 100%. Because if I'm giving you 100%, I expect the same in fucking return. You know what I'm saying? Like, on some real shit. If a man can't give you that in return, then you need to go and be alone or go on your own. You have too many things to worry about next month. And one of them is your little girl. Don't worry about Will's ass. Let him go ahead somewhere. Let him continue to make his money and buy himself what he wants and do what he wants. And you, what you need to do, Phaedra, is take care of you, take care of your little one, and do you. And make sure that you guys are safe and that you guys have what you need. You know what I'm saying? Like, not worry about some fucking half-ass motherfucker. He ain't even half-ass. That nigga is like a quarter-ass, okay? He's like a quarter, one-eighth-ass, okay? Don't never worry about one-eighth-ass nigga when he's not even worried about you like that. Like, you know, I had to learn that the hard way. Um, You know, now my husband, like, because, oh, yeah, we went through mad shit, but he still loved the hell out of me. Like, seriously, he still loved the hell out of me. And to this day, he still loved the hell out of me. It seemed like he loved me even more. But, you know... Half-ass could be all type of things. Half-ass could be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he he don't help around the house or he don't go to work. It could be all type of things. And I just feel like we as women need to just realize the okie doke that niggas be coming at us with or men be coming at us with. You know how they be quick to throw game? Oh, what's up, girl? You looking good. What's up, mommy? If you don't get your fucking foolish ass out of my face, that that be me. You know, or I have dudes are like that try to like you know they see me and they start smiling and just I just be like just don't even think about it. Mm -mm, don't even think about it. That's my attitude. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that that's the best attitude to have towards a person, but fuck out of here with that bullshit. I ain't trying to hear you. Don't even think about it. First of all, I got a husband. Second of all, don't even think about it. Okay? If I didn't have a husband, don't even think about it. Goodbye. I already know your game. Goodbye. But on a real shit, that's what you need to tell Will. Goodbye. If he want to come around for your baby, then that's great. But if he's not doing it now, sweetheart, don't feel like he's going to start doing it next month. And damn sure don't pass up your opportunity of getting help until you get stable on your feet. You know what I'm saying? Each person that has a place in life has a place in life. What I mean by that is Will got a place in life, and that's what Will. 
doing him and being alone. And your place in life, Phaedra, is with your little girl and taking care of her and yourself. That's where you're supposed to be. And your mother helped you. She helped you buy stuff for your baby. So that's the person that really cares for you. You know, as a parent, we always go all out for our kids. But I feel like sometimes we fall into a trap where men tell us something and, you know, we we wishing on a star, we hoping that they mean this shit. When in reality, they really don't. You know what I'm saying? So, me personally, not after hearing, you know, well, I don't want to break up with you because I don't want child support. Nigga, you about to get all the child support taken out of your check. That would be me, like, oh, word? Oh, really? Oh, really, though? Okay. I'm about to fix your ass real good. I'm going to fix you some real sipping hot ass fucking piping ass hot tea. I'm just saying. Sweetheart, live your life. And realize that this guy, this boy, is not worth your time nor your babies. And if he can't give you the time of day now and he can't help you buy shit, then he's not going to do shit for you then. Straight up. Don't miss your opportunity of having somewhere for you and your baby girl to live and get help. It's not fraud if y'all are boyfriend and girlfriend and he doesn't live with you. But it is fraud if you continue to allow him to dick you around. Okay? That's where it's fraud at. Because you keep thinking that that shit is real. And that shit is fake as fake. Fake, fake. All right? You know what fake, fake is. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, you guys. Let Phaedra know what you would do. How would you handle the situation if a motherfucker came up to you and said to you, I don't want to break up with you because I don't want to pay child support. I don't even know if that nigga would still have teeth. Like, knowing me, I probably would smack him in his motherfucking mouth. Like, for real. Now, you going to need to get some new teeth. All right? Now, you going to need to get some new teeth. Because I just got mine in. And they real cute. But now, you going to need to visit the same dentist I did. And let them know why you need new teeth. Because my shit was falling the fuck out. Or just basically, they was cavitated up. Okay? But you need new teeth because I knocked them the fuck out. I'm so real shit. So, you guys, um, I want to read this third one, um, but I do believe it's super long, and, uh, it is very long, and I do have to go, you know, it is 2.50 in the afternoon, so I do have somewhere to be, but I will do another Real Talk next Monday while I'm on vacation, so, you guys, look forward to that, and you ladies, I hope you have an amazing Wednesday. Enjoy yourselves. Um, stay beautiful, diva, and diva delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. I love you guys, and I'll see you soon. Um, yeah, hopefully I feel better tomorrow, um, which will be today when you guys watch this, because my husband has been nagging me to go to the urgent care, and I really don't want to because I don't really like to make a big deal out of nothing. But, you know, it is important that I go because I don't really want to have an infection in my foot. That just wouldn't be cool. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, it doesn't bother me, but it does hurt still. And he's just like, you need to go to urgent care. So, I don't know. I'll, hopefully, I'll just go tomorrow and not just keep putting it off until something bad happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah. It's, like, really, really disgusting. Looking. It's not even disgusting looking because I you know, made it look good, but it did look really bad, you know, it really, really did. My trip has not been, it has been great, but it has not been that great, like, a bitch had to run, like, two miles damn near with a suitcase and a heavy-ass book bag through the airport, and then on my second flight, I forgot to tell you guys, when I got to North Carolina, it was supposed to be at gate 15, and I got off of gate 13, and I was so happy about that, because it was like, oh, bitch, all you got to do is slide to the left, and you be on the gate, instead of walking. And I confirmed this when I got off the motherfucking plane. I had the American Airlines people check, and they was like, yeah, right there. So, you know, I went to use the ladies' room, and I come back and went to the gate. I had, like, probably, like, 40 minutes, 30 minutes left till we was able to board. And, um, yeah, I lo I went to my gate and it was like three people sitting there. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess nobody's going to be sitting next to me. They said this plane was full, but it don't look like it. But then I said to me, April, bitch, go ask, some go ask again. So I go ask and I'm like, um, where's the people over there? There's nobody over there at gate um, 15. There's nobody over there. And 
What did they tell me? Oh, we changed the gate. It's right over there. Gate 17. Where all the crowd of people are at. So you guys were going to have me miss my next flight? Like, god damn. What the fuck? Like, really though? I was going to miss my next flight? Oh, god. I don't know if I was doomed. And then, you know, I get mauled by a cart. Like, literally, I got mauled. And um, I got threatened by a big New York City rat. And what else? Oh, yes. My rental car that I went to pick up when I got upstate New York. Because um, I, I deal with Avis. Um, so they gave me this Hyundai Accent. Because they wanted to put me in a Kia Rio. Because I asked for a small car. Bitch, I didn't ask for a clown car. I don't want it that small. So they gave me a Hyundai Accent. And so I go get in it. And um, there's soda bottles in there. And it smelled like cigarettes. And when I turned the AC on, it smelled like cigarettes. At that point, I was like, listen, I just want to get to my husband's house. I just want to get to his apartment. Because I haven't seen him in like a couple of months. Like a month and a half since May. Since May 10th. And I just want to get to his house. You know, I had to take the, you know, I left New York City. So I went from my mom's house to upstate New York. So I took a Greyhound bus, okay, and that was three hours and 50 minutes. And then I had to get off at the Albany Port Authority. And then I had to wait like 20 minutes and then get on my bus, the next Greyhound bus that took me to Albany International Airport. I could have took a cab, but why take a fucking cab for like 30 bucks when I can just get off there, same ticket. Ticket was only $29. So I took uh, two buses and then when I went to get my car, it was smelly and I just was like, I just want to get to my husband. That's all. It's like eight something at night now. Okay. A bitch want to get it popping. Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. He done made me dinner and shit and fuck the dinner. I just, a bitch want to get it popping. Okay. But yeah, so I mean like my trip has been good, but damn, the obstacle courses that I had to fucking take to get here. Now mind you, like I said to my husband, I took a plane and then I had to get on a train, the subway train, the, the number seven, to get to the Port Authority because I wasn't about to pay forty dollars for a cab ride to the Port Authority like I did before. So I took a plane and then a subway and then two buses, okay? Two buses. And a rental car just to get here to see you. I feel like I was like on a world tour, traveling, like on a journey. You know what I'm saying? Like for real. But I'm happy that I'm here. But goddamn, my bitch is like now I feel like a little exhausted. Only because I really didn't get much sleep last night. And I don't know if it's my foot that's wearing me down. But we shall see. But I love you guys. I will see you guys in the next video. Um, stay Diva and Divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. You can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Huh? 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 Huh?